Hey hi everyone, Phil here. This is example 2 of doing a t-test in linear regression. To make this one different to the last one, this time I'm looking at a computer output. This is from Stata. If you're using some other package it looks very similar. And we're going to do part B. Test whether the estimated slope coefficients of the log linear model are individually different from zero. And we're going to do labor. So this is a theoretical model. Let y stand for log output, x1 stand for log labor, x2 stand for log capital. We're going to test whether the slope coefficient of log labor is significantly different from zero. So step one, state the null and the alternative. So the coefficient on log labor is zero. That's what it means to say that we're testing that the coefficient is zero or not. Versus the alternative that it's not zero. Not zero, so it's a two-tailed test. Step two, compute the test statistic. That is an estimate of the slope minus the hypothesized value zero divided by the standard error. And the state output, we're looking at this box here, the labor coefficient is that, the corresponding standard error slide along is that, okay, and if you do one divide by the other, you're going to get this number, what they're calling in state of the t ratio. Alright, that is giving it to four decimal places, I've given it to five decimal place. We're going to be different if I round up by 0 0.001. So here it's rounded down doesn't matter, it's not going to make much difference. The previous example I showed you in step 3 and 4 how to finish off the problem using the tables and looking up critical values. This time I'm going to calculate the p-value. We're still going to need tables for this because, you know, unless we have a computer. So we, for this test we're going to use the table for the t-distribution. The degree of freedom that we need to look up is always n minus p, where n is the number of observations, here it's telling us it's 20, minus the number of parameters in the mean part of the model, intercept, two slopes, that's 3. So it's 17 degrees of freedom. Now before I look up the table, let's just show you how to compute this p-value, or what p-value is doing. So this is the t-distribution, and we've got a value here, and I rounded it up here, so that's why I've got this value here, so it's, that's our test statistic value. It's a two-tailed test so I'm looking at plus and minus this figure so I've written the other value on this side. As you know for a critical value approach that we, we compare this critical value and um, the rejection region is if this number in absolute value exceeds the critical value. Now the p approach is I need to look at the table to see what is the okay physically the area to the right of this that will give me the p-value or half the p-value, which I've done it by p. So it gives me half the p-value. only gives me half the p-value because I'm doing a two-tailed test. So to get the full p-value, I need to double it. So I, this one, and I double it because by symmetry, this tail is the same as this tail area. Okay, so conceptually, that's all we're going to do. Uh, in practice, it turns out a pain in the butt because we're using old technology to do this thing, and our tables are don't give us... Um, every value we need. Okay, so guys, what you're going to find is 1.8296 is not in the table, but it's sandwiched between two values. 1.7396, which corresponds to 5% on the right-hand tail, and in blue here, 2.1098, which corresponds to, what is it, 2.5% in that tail. Okay. We need to double that, those, the red number and the blue number, to get to two tails. So this red is actually 10% and this blue is 5%. So I've written it down here. So that corresponds to 10% to this level, that corresponds to 5%. We are between the two significance levels. In other words, we are s the significance here is uh, somewhere between 5% and 10%. Uh, so the p-value is between 5% and 10%. Okay, now if we're doing this test at the 5% level, since p, this is the rule, since p is bigger than 
0.5% or 0.05 do not reject the null at alpha equals to 5% and uh, like in the metrics that's the default so that's uh, that's the conclusion we could make if you're doing like a statistics course you would probably make a note that since since sorry I got these symbols the wrong way around p is bigger than 0 0.05 and less than 0 0.1 if you're doing a course in stats, you'd say since p is okay, less than 0 0.1, but it's bigger than 0 0.05, that it's weakly significant. But we can ignore that. If we're supposing we're doing a course in econometrics. What is the exact p value? Look, it's right here. It's 0 0.085, i.e. 8.5%. So now I hope you appreciate the convenience of using computer outputs, the computers will calculate exactly for you the p-value. Uh, you can't get the exact one uh, from tables because the tables don't tablet every kind of value. We have to remember that tables are kind of very old technology, it's like the days before computers, so some you know people have to spend time churning out the tables. But now in these days we've got computers, the critical value approach is pretty uh, pretty um ah oh, it's gonna fade away one day at least that's what i think right um remarks to add to the one from example one i forgot to mention another uh, common mistake students make here is in step three when you're looking up the degree of freedom often you're going to find that you know so often you're going to find that students say that df degree of freedom is n minus two Okay, um, I think now why that is, is because when students first study regression, they study what's called a simple linear regression model. That's got one intercept, one slope. That's two parameters. That's why it's n minus two. But then they memorize it as a rule. No, that's not the rule. The rule is degree of freedom is n minus the number of parameters in the model. So even in a first course in statistics, when students see a simple linear regression model, and in an exam they could just modify the simple linear regression model by chopping off the um, intercept and then it should be n minus 1 but of course you're going to find students doing n minus 2 that's just the way it is okay so we're done here there's a question to you and to this question you can think about log capital is that significant just look over here all right oh and one final thing I've just noticed here as I'm solving this thing I, this could be better phrase look Test whether the estimated slope coefficients. Uh, now this is this question is making the error that I mentioned in example one. You are not testing the estimated slope coefficient, you are testing the true slope coefficient. So in other words, this estimated value should not be in here, i.e., you are not testing this. This is the estimated slope coefficient, right? Because um, this is kind of a bit strange to say that anyway, because Look, uh, if you're testing, is uh, the estimated beta 1 equal to 0? Well, you can just see here. No, it's not 0, is it? It's 0 0.33922. Okay, take care. Be Genki.